Hi, this is the first video in a series on the female reproductive system. The female reproductive system is made up of internal and external sex organs. It is immature at birth and develops to maturity at puberty to be able to produce gametes and also to carry the fetus to full term. The internal sex organs are the uterus, the fallopian tubes, and the ovaries. The uterus, which is popularly known as the womb, accommodates the embryo, which develops into the fetus. The uterus also produces vaginal and uterine secretions, which help the transit of sperm to the fallopian tubes. The ovaries produce the ova, also known as the eggs. The external sex organs are also known as these genitals, and these are the organs of the vulva, which include the labia, the clitoris, and the vaginal opening. The vagina is connected to the uterus at the cervix. The uterus and the uterine tubes are covered by the fold of the broad ligament. The uterine tubes are lateral extensions of the uterus. They are suspended in the part of the broad ligament known as the mesosalpinx. The tubes are lined with nutrient-loaded ciliated columnar epithelium supported by connective tissue and smooth muscle. The rhythmic contractions of this muscle aids the movement of ovum or egg from the fimbri to the uterine cavity, whereas the lining cells support it nutritionally. The fallopian tube is about 4 inches long and has three rather distinct parts. These are the distal portion, which is known as the fimbri. Now the fimbri are finger-like projections which catch the discharged ovum and propel it into the tubular lumen. Next is the ampulla, which is the widest part of the tube. The third part of the fallopian tube is the isthmus. The lumen of the isthmus narrows as it enters the uterine cavity. The uterus is a pear-shaped structure about 3 inches long. It gets bigger in pregnancy. The upper part, which is located above the tubal openings, is called the fundus. The central part is the body or the corpus and the lower portion is called the cervix. The uterus is usually antiverted and antiflexed, meaning that it is tilted and bent forward relative to the vagina. Its neck or the cervix fits into the upper part of the vagina at about a right angle and the uterine body or the fundus is bent and tilted anteriorly over the bladder. Backward bending or retroflexion of the uterus can be seen in women who have given birth. A retroflexed uterus is predisposed to mild slipping into the vagina, usually referred to as prolapse of the uterus into the vagina. This is due to the fact that a retroflexed uterus is more in the axis of the cervix and vagina. Such a happening is generally resisted by the pelvic and urogenital diaphragms, the perineal body, and numerous fibrous ligaments such as broad ligament and condensations of the pelvic fascia that move the uterus and its tubes to the pelvic wall and the sacrum. The wall of the uterus is largely smooth muscle or myometrium. It is lined with a glandular surface layer of variable thickness known as the endometrium, which is extremely sensitive to hormones such as estrogen and progesterone. The cervix of the uterus, which is about one inch in length, has two parts. These are the superior supravaginal part and the lower vaginal part. The mucosal lining of the cervix is characterized by intersecting ridges that resist bacterial invasion after menses. The cervical mucosa does not participate in the periodic thickenings and thinnings experienced by the uterine body's mucosa. 
The vagina is an elastic fibromuscular tube with a mucosal lining of stratified squamous epithelium. The anterior and posterior mucosal surfaces are normally in contact. The anterior vaginal wall incorporates the short 4 cm urethra. The mucosa of the vagina has no glands. Therefore, secretory activity during sexual stimulation is derived from a transudate of plasma from the local capillaries and glands in the cervix as well as secretions from the male bulbo urethral glands. The vaginal lining reveals few sensory receptors. Now the cervix fits into the vagina and this creates a circular space on either side of the cervix which is known as the fornix. The posterior fornix is fibroblastic and is capable of significant expansion during intercourse. A central canal, which is known as the cervical canal, runs along its length and connects the cavity of the body of the uterus with the lumen of the vagina. The opening at the uterine end of the canal is called the internal os, whereas the opening at the vaginal end of the canal is called the external os. The uterus is supplied by the uterine artery and drained by the uterine vein. The ovaries are whitish in color and located alongside the lateral wall of the uterus in a region called the ovarian fossa. The ovaries are connected to either sides of the uterus by a fibrous cord known as the ovarian ligament. The ovaries are connected to the body walls by the suspensory ligament of the ovaries which is a posterior extension of the broad ligament of the uterus. That part of the broad ligament of the uterus that covers the ovary is known as the mesoverium. The ovary is thus considered an intraperitoneal organ. The ovaries are supplied by the ovarian arteries and drained by the ovarian veins. The round ligament of the uterus originates at the uterine horns in the parametrium. It maintains the anteversion or bending forward position of the uterus, especially during pregnancy. It is supplied by the artery of the round ligament, which is also known as the Samson's artery. Thanks for watching. There are videos dedicated to the individual organs of the female reproductive system. Make sure to check out the links in the description section below. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.